part two of the video. If I step to him, and I'm Anthony Joshua, Dubois isn't a guy who's going to intuitively move away from the pocket. You know that. This is the gunslinger guy. Who you look at his hands and you think to yourself, man, I could reach for my gun before this guy can. Right? You uh, understand that you might be able to land some shots. Wasn't that the deal with Nigel Benn? Right? You looked at him and you thought, you know, I could land some shots here. What happens if Joshua goes for it? Folks, that's not him. Right? He's not Mike Tyson in the first round. The problem with Dubois is he's different and not in a good way. He's different every other fight, isn't he? Right? If you get the guy who fought Joe Joyce, okay, he's manageable. Right? If you get the guy who somehow shows up with an attitude, thinking it's his night. Right? The Philippe Ergovic version of Dubois. He's an absolute beast. You're throwing right hands. You say, hey, I can land my right hand. You start throwing it. And suddenly... This dude is firing back, and he's fearless. Right? This dude, even though you have a punch, even though you've shown the punch, the Lorena fight, Lorena knocks him down multiple times. Even though you've shown this guy that you can knock him down, this version of Dubois digs in his heels and is trading with you. Right, folks, if you're on the Joshua side of the ledger, even though both guys here are blessed punchers, you don't want a first-round shootout. Right, Joshua is popular. Joshua is talented. He's not Foreman, Liston, Ben, Tyson in the first round. Right, folks, He's simply not. You know that. He's a guy like Usyk. Nothing wrong with being like Usyk. Who wants to see the lay of the land. So the pacing of the first round is crucial. If it's a shootout, even if Joshua's landing some shots, that doesn't favor Joshua. Because Joshua is more of a conservative guy. Right? Floyd Mayweather, another guy, Bernard Hopkins, another guy who wants to spend the first three rounds figuring you out. Right? That's very different. I mean, that's very different than a see it, hit it guy. Right? A Nigel Benn type guy. Understand? You know, Floyd Patterson faced Sonny Liston twice, not once, twice. Did not make it out of the first round in either fight. You know the guy who comes ready in the first round. Derek Chisora fought Joe Parker. This is the same Joe Parker who goes the distance with Deontay Wilder, goes the distance with Gili Zhang. Chisora knocked Joe Parker down in the first few seconds of their first fight first few seconds right the first round if I'm rooting for Joshua I want the first round to be uneventful right the Dubois side of the ledger is different isn't it right I'm not saying Dubois is Sonny Liston in the first round I'm not saying that at all right by the way Joe Fraser made it to the second round the champion when he fought George Foreman, did not survive it, right? If I'm rooting for Dubois, what I know is that on some nights, on some nights, he can be George Foreman, right? If I'm Dubois and if I'm honest with myself, I know Dubois has a jab, but if I'm thinking, wow, am I the boxer AJ is? The answer is no. Right? He's not, you know, if this turns into a tactical match, advantage older fighter. 
advantage AJ. Right? So what Dubois should consider, if you're watching the first round and Dubois comes across the ring and you confuse him momentarily with Derek Chisora, right? Fighters have pushed Chisora the distance. Many of them. Usyk, for example. But they had to survive a moment in time. This is the question, by the way, and it's a big question. With the upcoming Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight, right? The question is, when Tyson comes across the ring, is Jake Paul going to be able to survive the next six minutes? Three rounds in that fight, two-minute rounds. Folks, believe it or not, that's the question here. Right? If Dubois comes across the ring and suddenly you're looking at your watch and you're 60 seconds in and it's an outright shootout, you're going to think to yourself, okay, okay, Dubois has been here. Right? That Kevin Lorena fight, folks, that's a straight shootout. Right? That Philippe Bergovic fight, granted, that Philippe Bergovic fight goes several rounds. Folks, just look at the power shots. In the front end of that fight right and understand sometimes you have uncrowned problems in the heavyweight division right Ergovic Gili Zhang both of those guys would give both of these guys problems right if there's a shootout early that's gonna favor Dubois because he's the guy who on some nights is a quick draw Right? Let's talk about the dynamic you have to worry about on the Dubois side of the ledger. Right? With Joshua, I think it's the pace of the fight. A polite first round, and Joshua fans have a lot of reason for hope. Right? They know their guy, you know, has a back foot even. People need to figure this out. Right? I believe the trainers who have worked with Anthony Joshua see a skill set. Right? I believe Derek James, working with Anthony Joshua, realized that Joshua's actually a blessed athlete. They see a skill set where they say, wow, you know, if this guy just believed in his back foot a little bit more, and if this guy just developed some defensive tendencies, the sky's the limit. Right? Understand, Floyd Mayweather saw Joshua. Mayweather... And the principals never talk publicly about this, right? Because fighters have a code. They're not going to diss other fighters and stuff like that. Mayweather was concerned. My words, not Mayweather's words. Mayweather was concerned about Joshua's defense, right? I believe Robert Garcia and Derek James were concerned about, May about Joshua's defense. Mayweather actually invited Joshua to come to Las Vegas, another boxing hotbed in the United States, to train with him, right? Trust me, Mayweather understood you don't have to tell Joshua how to punch, right? You, you, know, you know, you don't you don't have to tell Joshua how to, you know, land shots. What you have to tell Joshua is how to have a hand up, how to dip his head, how to do what Canelo does naturally, right? Have a shoulder in the way, have his head tucked. Come in at angles where you're on the other side of the other guy's power punch. Right? Well, just understand, the first few rounds, crucial. Because if Joshua gets out of his construct, right, if he starts opening up, we saw what happens in situations like that. First two rounds against Andy Ruiz, Joshua wins them. You get to the third round, Joshua drops Ruiz. What happens? Joshua starts exhaling. Joshua gets dropped. World changes. A guy who thought he was Goliath is actually facing adversity. Right? Joshua against a guy who doesn't have the foot speed, but who has the hand speed, is curiously trading shots with a blessed combination puncher and Andy Ruiz. 
right? He's trading shots with the guy who has the fastest hands in the division. Well, on the Dubois side of the ledger, I want you to think about the possible nightmares Dubois could have if Joshua gets a slow fight, survives the first three rounds, and suddenly is popping a jab in Dubois' face. Think about the nightmares. Right? He's going to start thinking about Joe Joyce, isn't he? He's going to start thinking about how his eye blew up on him. Right? Because this is the guy who's getting hit with jabs and then stays at the same angle against slow-handed Joe Joyce. Right? Think about that. Joe Joyce fought Joe Parker. And Joe Joyce is on his front foot looking for Parker because he understood. Parker's not going to stand there and get hit with a jab. You know that about Parker. Against Dubois, Joe Joyce had a guy who was standing there and getting hit with a jab. Understand how bad the memory is. You then face Usyk later. Heavyweight championship on the line. Southpaw. So Dubois not even getting hit with a left jab. Here he's fighting a southpaw. He's getting hit with a right jab. Folks, what's going on in the later rounds of that fight? How is Dubois getting hit with the same type jab only from a southpaw in a high stakes fight? How come we never, and I mean never, see Canelo getting hit with a jab like that? How come we never saw Floyd Mayweather getting hit, in, you know, with a jab like that? How come that just doesn't happen to defensively blessed fighters? Why is it happening to Dubois? Why is Dubois a guy with power? A guy who has an age advantage, right? Presumably more stamina, more recovery power against both a Joyce and an Usyk. How is it possible that against those older fighters, Dubois, who comes across like an athlete, power in both hands, how is it that Dubois couldn't take a step back, couldn't start bending at the waist like Canelo does? How come, how come he couldn't move his head out of the way like Derek Chisora did? Right? Compare the Chisora fight against Joyce with the Dubois fight against Joyce. Right? Think about how different they were. Dubois is standing around the pocket getting riddled with a jab. KG vet Chisora is voluntarily going over to the ropes, trying to invite Joe Joyce over there, daring Joyce to throw his jab. And, of course, Chisora is leaning away from the shot, planning his counter. So if you're on the Dubois side of the line, look, man, the first three rounds have to be hell for Joshua. Right? Just like if you're on the Mike Tyson side of the ledger in the Jake Paul fight. Tyson has to go out there and make those first three rounds hell. Right? Because you privately understand if a boxing match breaks out, right? Joshua's a better boxer than you think. He's not just a puncher. Jake Paul, believe it or not, is a better boxer than you think. Right? You understand the advantage that Dubois has is youth and power. Right? The idea that he is if the bullet starts flying, willing to take more risks than Anthony Joshua. So, if I'm on the Dubois side of the ledger, I don't want a tentative Dubois the first three rounds. Right? I want Dubois to come out like Nigel Benn. Right? I want Dubois to come out with the attitude of, hey, AJ, you and I have sparked together already. Right? Hey, AJ... You're the biggest name in British boxing. He is. It's not Tyson Fury. Let's say, you know, you say, hey, AJ, you're the biggest name in British boxing, and I'm unafraid. 
right? 34, how old was Joe Lewis when he started falling apart? How old was Ali when he started falling apart? Right? Old man, it's a new day. Right? If you're going to stop me, okay, great, but this is going to be rough and tumble. Right? That's the attitude you want. If you get to round four and you're noticing that AJ's jab is a factor, folks, that's a wrap. Right? AJ's a better boxer than Jarrell Miller, who's two front foot. Right? If AJ's able to set up shop with that jab, if AJ isn't stretched, the Dubois side of the ledger is going to have problems. Right? Let's talk about a fight that I'm going to just close here where AJ got stretched. He's fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Right? AJ on his back foot. Vladimir Klitschko had just lost his title, well, just more than a year earlier to Tyson Fury. Just understand, they're in the ring. AJ seems to have modeled himself off of Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Well, AJ's holding his own. Then AJ knocks down Vladimir Klitschko. The fight's in the United Kingdom, just like this fight is. Right? AJ, immensely popular. He knocks down Vladimir Klitschko. So everything is working for him at that moment. Klitschko gets off the canvas. AJ starts throwing a lot of left hooks. Look at the film. I believe AJ's left hook is one of his best punches, but he lacks confidence in it unless you're diminished. Well, Vladimir Klitschko, who's a vet, right, survives the left hook barrage, makes it to the next round, then he drops Joshua, right? Now, that's the kind of action that happens in rough and tumble fights. Joshua gets off the canvas, folks, he's spent, he's done. This is a turning point in heavyweight boxing. Right, folks, all the films I'm referring to are here on YouTube. AJ is done. He's dead in the water. Right? Understand, for some odd reason, Vladimir Klitschko starts feeling like, no doubt, Canelo felt fighting Jaime Munguia after that knockdown. Vladimir Klitschko curiously lets AJ off the hook. It's AJ's second win. It's a fluke uppercut when the two guys are, you know, backing away off a slow moment. That changes that fight. Just understand, AJ was so chagrined by that moment that he knocks down Kubrat Pulev later. Pulev is desperate, right? Pulev turns his back to AJ. Pulev is finished, right? He's finished. But AJ remembered being overextended against Klitschko after he knocked down Klitschko. AJ remembered how spent he was. How Klitschko then was able to come back and knock him down. So believe it or not, when Kubrat Pulev gets up, AJ doesn't finish him. Even though Pulev doesn't have a Vladimir Klitschko level punch. Right? Pulev doesn't have a Daniel Dubois level punch. AJ takes his foot off the gas. Kubrat Pulev gets back in the fight. Kubrat Pulev, who's semi conscious, is upright long enough to become conscious again. Right? AJ is able to finish him off in the later rounds, but understand, AJ has to pace himself. Right? This isn't a Derek Chisora who has David Hay. Revisit that fight. Has David Hay at risk early in that fight, but then runs out of gas. Right? AJ is thinking about pacing. Daniel Dubois in this fight can't. He cannot allow AJ to get in a rhythm. He has to come out in my opinion, and he has to be damn near close to Mike Tyson against Marvis Fraser. He has to let AJ know, look, man, whatever your construct, 
we're going to drive faster than 75 miles an hour early in this fight. So, so the first three rounds are key here. If you're Dubois and you're fighting AJ in the UK, don't expect a decision. Right, let's go. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for stopping by.